Okay, so now let's go back and review the sensory experience which you have after your ego collapses and see how this plays out in your behavior which everyone around you will take for symptoms that you've lost your mind. Well, to start with this incredible surge of energy that you have, you can't sleep, you can't stop moving, and you can't stop talking. Now, to help you move through this period of high energy, the best thing to do is to find a way to express it through art, writing, or even dance or exercise. Basically, anything you can do to work the energies through that you're dealing with. With that sense of oneness I was talking about, everything might seem like a dream and you'll want to test reality. You might want to try and walk through a wall or go out and stand in traffic or even fly out a window and that of course can be very dangerous for you. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be strapped to a hospital bed against your will, but anyone in a state of acute psychosis should have two people with them to offer protection and emotional support at all times. Because you'll have this deeper understanding, you'll want to share your ideas with people, but most of the time they won't be ready to listen to what you have to say. It could be because what you are saying is confusing to them, or perhaps your new ideas are disturbing to them because they're so different from their way of seeing things. And like I said in the previous video, the experience is so indescribable that you may use metaphors to try and explain what's happening to you, like, I'm in heaven, or I am God. And while you may be speaking symbolically or poetically, the people around you could take you literally, thinking, he thinks he's in heaven, he thinks he's God, he's totally crazy. And that's why it's very important that any support people that you do have working with you need to be very open-minded and very non-judgmental about what's happening to you. Now it is true that some people get stuck in delusions which they themselves take very literally, such as thinking that they're Jesus the Messiah. However, if someone is healing and working through their process, these strongly held delusions should loosen their grip within a few weeks, perhaps even a few days. And with the enhanced sensory experience, you may respond very strongly to smells or noises, or be very entranced by certain visual patterns, leading to more strange behavior. Speaking personally, it was my own fascination with the heightened sensory world that I was in, which led me into thinking that I was dead. Another place where this heightened sensitivity can cause you problems is at the psychiatric hospital because being in such a cold and hostile environment, people tend to act terribly in front of their psychiatrist, giving them more proof that you need medications. But the truth is you may just be reacting to your surroundings and how you're being treated. Because you enter a world of timelessness, you may have no idea how long you've been in the hospital or how long you've been in a certain situation. What day is it? What year is it? And of course, the people around you will find this very disturbing. Perhaps one of the most positive aspects of the bipolar manic crisis is the overwhelming sense of love that you can feel inside of yourself and your willingness to express this love with perhaps even perfect strangers who are just sending you a positive energy. You may want to put your arms around them, hug them, or perhaps even get sexual with them. And even with this somewhat positive experience, it may be looked on with fear from others because it's so different and it's not normal. I think one of the key characteristics of bipolar mania is your loss of shame, and when that comes you immediately want to take off your clothes almost in protest. It's like you look down and you think, what are these clothes doing on me, and you need to get naked, and very often you may want to even piss or shit, basically anywhere that you are, and even masturbation isn't out of the question because it goes along with this total release of repressions. That sense of sacredness I talked about can lead you into revering or bowing to people as you truly identify with the God side of them. You may see people who are close to you that are giving you love as some sort of saint or angel and you'll treat them accordingly. And don't forget, being in a sort of middle world, people often tend to get quite delusional. They start to make up stories about what's really happening to them. And in that story, they may think of themselves as some sort of historical character, like Jesus or perhaps a king. And as you come to them, they'll see you as a different character as well. And as you're being tested by God, you will often be very disobedient with worldly authority. You'll resist arrest, you might fight people who are trying to control you, and you will literally think that this is a matter of life and death for you. And in fact, it may be, because even though it is an apparent delusion, it has tremendous symbolic meaning for you as a person going through it. Think about it. How you're able to work through this very difficult spiritual experience is going to have a direct impact on how you live the rest of your life. 
As part of the confrontation with death that I mentioned, you may think that you need to kill yourself in a way in order to move on to the next level, to the spirit world, and leave this material world behind. This can lead to a form of a ritualized suicide. Now this suicide isn't so much an attempt to end your life as it is to continue your life on the spirit level, and so it can be very symbolic. For example, in my situation, a suicide was simply turning out the lights in a ballroom I was in. The imagery of regressions can come in many forms. Personally, I remember revisiting parts of my childhood, then going back into experiences of the cosmos. At one point in the hospital, I was making ape noises as I was visualizing scenes from the movie A 2001 Space Odyssey. Like I was going back to the beginning of time, and that movie was the representation of that return. And believe me, when you start making ape noises in front of the psychiatrist, you're in for a long stay. And finally, with your shift in values, expanded awareness, and increasing concern for social issues, you might see yourself getting very emotional about issues that never seemed to bother you before, disturbing images that you see on TV, or even buried problems within your own family may get you very upset, whereas before you would just put up with it. In fact, bringing up family issues or family secrets is such a central part of the healing of acute psychosis that I've dedicated one video to this subject alone. So despite the fact that many of the experiences or emotional shifts which you are going through are quite positive, your behavior will be strange and almost everything you do will be interpreted negatively by almost everyone around you. Now I don't want to overgeneralize by making this sound like one big party that was ruined by your parents and doctors, because once your healing process begins, there will be a lot of fear and pain that you'll need to open up to as well. And from what I've seen, I believe that a big part of the fear is simply connected to the newness of the whole experience. So that even for people who have quite positive manic experiences, once they snap back into reality, they might find the transition very frightening because they don't know what just happened to them. Another source of fear or pain will be related to the trauma or even negative energies that you may have carried around for your entire life. It was Dr. Carl Jung who first identified this somewhat scary part of ourselves, calling it the shadow, over 80 years ago. And when our shadow starts to come out, we can start to act pretty nasty. One minute we may be saying to someone that we love them, and then maybe 20 minutes later we're looking at them saying, I hate you, get out of my face. And so with all of these spiritual aspects happening, being in a middle world, having strong experiences of love as well as fear, you may even start to question your own sanity in the middle of this, and at the very least you will be very confused about what's happening to you. But what's important to remember is that all of this is part of a very complex spiritual healing process, which if at all possible needs to be supported and not blocked. So in conclusion, I'd just like to say that yes, when a person goes into the acute psychosis, often associated with bipolar mania, they do exhibit very strange behavior, there's no doubt about it. But there are reasons for this. There is a sensory experience that the person is undergoing beneath the surface of things that up to now modern psychiatry has simply dismissed as signs of mental illness. And I think that if more people in a bipolar manic crisis are going to heal, that the support network we have of doctors, families, and friends needs to come at this with more love and less fear. They need to support this person and they need to understand that this is basically a healing spiritual event that needs to happen for their long-term benefit. Now I don't want to leave you with the impression that after you pass through an experience like this without medication that you'll reach ultimate enlightenment and all of your problems will go away because that's not going to happen. But the more you understand how to work through these processes, the better off you'll be.